this me? Or is this, is that me? That okay. is, that one's yours, yeah. This one in the middle, actually. This one? Yeah. Okay. And then is there like some little clicker or something like that? Yeah. Like some signs or something like that? Yeah, so we have to use just this. Better. Better. Thank you. Um, and you have to talk over all of these cookies, I guess. Sure. Um, all right, well, perfect. Uh, so my name is Nick. And so we go for all my SVP and psilocybin combinations within Mesoamerican ritual. Um, that's the title of my paper. The Theobroma SPP is the scientific term for the cocoa that we're drinking here. Um, so, the cocoa is native to Central and South America, and uh, it has flowers that grow on the trunk of the tree, which you don't often hear about. The pods that you might have seen at the beginning of class um, earlier in the semester, they contain about 20 to 60 beans per pod, and they're surrounded by a light bulb, and they contain several chemical compounds. Um, there's actually religious phobias in Mesoamerica against cultivating cacao, or cocoa, which I'll just call cocoa. And there is some cultivation going on, but historically there's um, religious phobias, and it's more or less the newer generations which cultivated on mass scales. The Spaniards reported Moctezuma II having large quantities stored in his storehouses. And by 1635 AD, um, it was labeled as a contraband by European governments. Why was it labeled as contraband? Well, <laughs> be, well, partially uh, because they were, just, they were putting just trades, import export trades on certain countries. Oh, okay. Uh, but, but it is interesting to note that historically it has been labeled as contraband, but that's just a side note. But we'll get into the count. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drink too much, guys. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, so, um, one interesting Spanish account, which was recorded by conquistadors, um, I'm going to quote this here. Uh, quote Mention is never made that anyone drank wine of any kind to get drunk, but only woodland mushrooms, which they ate raw, and an abundance of chocolate that was being drunk in these solemnities, or uh, rituals. And so it's been confirmed that the mushrooms that they were eating with these uh, cacao drinks, or cocoa drinks, um, are termed flesh of the gods. It's the, they're called Tio Nacto, and the Teo is God, and the Nacto is the fungus or flesh. And this was rediscovered uh, in 1955. Gordon Wasson was a researcher, and he went down to Oaxaca Valley um, and participated in the ritual ceremony. This was printed in Life magazine, uh, June 10, 1957, and he reported that the cocoa or the cocoa drink was served just prior, just hours prior to inducing sacred mushrooms. So that was reported during the conquest, and again um, in the 1900s. And um, after the researcher drank the cacao, ate the mushrooms, she experienced dramatic visions and had a body experience. And this is uh, one of the images from Life magazine of the researcher Gordon Watson accepting the sacred mushrooms from shamanist Maria Sabina. And just hours prior to that, they had partaken in the cacao ceremony. But I'm, I'm, of course, by giving everybody cacao today, I'm in no way right. promoting their consumption of mushrooms <laughs> later this afternoon. I just want to make that clear. Right. Okay. This is just what they would historically have done right. in, in the report. <laughs> and so some of the reasons, um, sometimes these PowerPoints, the little images show up like that when they're transferred so that they would place in the soul boxes. But, um, some speculation as to why they might be mixing the cocoa with the sacred mushroom is because of s there are some known chemical compounds, um, like this uh, phenylethylamine, theobromine, lactones, and then there's been a suggestion of other unknown compounds. Um, so for the ones that we know, uh, phenylethylamine is the same chemical that the brain releases when a person experiences attraction, unquote. 
and that's why we serve the chocolate at Valentine's Day. Um, however, Western chocolate breaks that chemical down in its manufacturing process, so that chocolate's a little bit different. But the cocoa uh, that contains this is an antidepressant and uh, an antidepressant. Uh, theobromine, which is where it gets its chemical name, theoroma, it's very similar to caffeine. Um, it alleviates symptoms of asthma, it adds oxygen to the person's lungs and body, so uh, helps them breathe better, which may be part of the reason why they induce it in the ritual. And then um, new research is suggesting that they also may have been fermenting it as an kind of alcohol. Um, this was printed just um, a month or two ago in 2014. They're making a tequila-like uh, drink from the distilling the white pulp and residues from the uh, vases that they found in Mesoamerica do show that they may or may not have been using this. They can't distinguish the chemical compounds, but it's possible that this was what they were finding in those vases. And then other researchers have suggested that there's other possible unknown chemicals because they have to like test for each individual one and think it's not just like cannabis we tested from bitter chemical ones. Um, such as MAOIs, which are certain inhibitors um, that you might find in like ayahuasca ceremonies where they combine the two substances in order to get the effect rather than just taking one by itself. And finally, um, these are the present indigenous groups within Mesoamerica that have confirmed to be using this cacao mushroom ceremony uh, currently to this day. That includes my as text, double text, uh, just a whole range. And so basically that's it. We just put over a couple of the com compounds within the cocoa. There may still be some unknown. And ultimately, the suggestion is that researchers try to figure out if there are some other compounds in there that are affecting this or why it might be being used within the mushroom ceremony. Thank you. Okay. So, do we have any questions for uh, Nick? Well, I do. How could the cacao, did you, uh, in your studies, uh, encounter any literature that might have discussed how the cacao could accentuate the, the effects of the mushrooms or maybe make you less, I mean, it's, it's generally accepted that the mushrooms make you pretty sick. And so, is there any... Right. I think that... Uh so I think that that has to do with some of the known compounds. Like, um, I think that the one here, that the theobromin that acts as caffeine, and it actually like dilates the blood vessels, whatever, and allows like circulation into the lungs and into like certain areas of the blood. And I think that part of the sickness that they might be experiencing from the mushrooms could be alleviated from that. Um, and also, I think that this chemical here that allows them to feel the experience of attraction or whatever, like the love chemical, would also prevent them from having like a bad experience and help them to have a good experience. So those two chemicals in, in themselves could possibly be enough to, to affect that experience. Well, is this mainly like the, um, the elites were doing this? Um, yes, uh, well, it seems like the shamans and the shamanists, and then there's been documentation when you go back far enough. I think in my report, you know, it's a long report, I can only get the basics down, but you'll, you'll see that there's actually records that say, the researchers are saying that, that the cocoa and everything was actually used as a way for the emergence of elites that, and that, um, like, and that, that, that they were basically also the ones using it for the most part. It was at some points used as currency. Um, so it was more or less the elites that had the access to even using it as a substance rather than using it as currency and things like that. So yeah, I mean it wasn't, but the drinks themselves seem to also have been somewhat gotten more common. Like you would do them at celebrations, weddings, and stuff like that. With sometimes, like nowadays, they'll do them with, without any mushroom use. But then the researchers have asked those people, those generations, why they're doing it, and they said they don't know. They're not really experiencing the divine effects that their ancestors talked about, but they do it 
for tradition anyway. So hopefully that helps somewhat clarify that. Anybody else? Okay, now you're off the hook. Let's get some chocolate. There's more cookies up here. Does anybody want some more of these cookies? There's a little more chocolate.